for the other building down. We're talking. Yes. Thank you. Now join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone, and welcome to the September 20th, 2021 Board of Aldermen meeting. To start first with the minutes of the previous meeting, September 7th, 2021, I will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. We have a motion. It's been seconded. Is there any alterations, deletions? No <coughs> hearing seeing none. Would all those in favor please say aye? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We are under outside the rail. Up first, we have Philip Allen, the same son of Vermont. Um, who's here to speak to us? <clears throat> Thank you all. Thanks for your time. Um, I don't have a great deal to say. Um, I think you all uh, gave to Mr. Heck just this outline of uh, the filling station. Does everybody have that? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, then, you know, as you all know, what we want to do is change four to seven into a, um, we're calling it the filling station right now, it has a name. And the idea would be it would be a solar array, an EV charging station, of the solar carport, an information center, possibly a, a seasonal food court, air pumps, bicycle segway rentals, the whole notion. The notion is when people come to charge their car, they use apps like this on the last page. They find out what's going on around, they come in and they spend some time in Rutland, which they may not be already doing. So what we're looking for, um, because uh, there's been actually a lot of support for this uh, from the mayor and Lyle Jepson and some other folks, um, we're just trying to make it work out financially because um, the solar array, which is what we're going to build with some hopes of making a bit of a profit off of it, is about where the profit ends, if it ever really begins. The car charging stations are a great deal of money. We don't know when they're going to pay for themselves. And then the landlord, it's been made clear to me, really wants a traditional lease. He wants X amount of money a month for anything like that. So the ways in which um, you folks might be able to help or direct us as to who could or, <laughs> or say, well, we're not going to help you at all, whatever you want to say. Um, the property tax relief. Right now, the Mendick family are paying $18,000 a year to have the building rot there. And um, that's been happening for 21 years. They have no interest in selling the property, as far as we can tell. But they are interested in leasing it to us for 20 years. We would like to see that to stop being taxed as if it's a viable business, which it is not, but be taxed for the solar array alone. If you folks did that, that would save the Mendick thousands of dollars a year, and that might help us negotiate our, our lease in an affordable way. Um, we're also very interested in the advice um, that the city has or the planning committees have as far as traffic flow, you know, really how it's going to look. We're, same sun, you know, we build solar arrays and car charging stations, but we're, we're not knowledgeable about how, about these sort of things, traffic flow, um, and we are knowledgeable about aesthetics, but we're very interested in what the city, how the city would like the corner to look because uh, we don't think it's good enough that it looks bad, that it can, it'll look better no matter what we do. It should really look, should look great. It should look as good as it could possibly look. And then, you know, we hear a lot of rumors about um, money coming the way of the city, maybe for exactly these sort of things, something that could be considered infrastructure, uh, obviously renewable energy, car charging stations, um, the idea of it being a, um, uh, a center for tourists, that if any of you folks have... Uh, grant money coming the way and you think that some part of this project or how the project could possibly be altered to fit into those categories, we'd be very interested. Um, we're going to build this regardless, but it would be, we're very interested in the city's input and uh, possibly if there is money, um, the city's financial help. So we just wanted to bring these things to your attention. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Alderman Clifford. Um, just wondering about, you obviously have to deal with any mitigation, a bunch of tanks, you have to deal with that, any, there's any underground storage tanks here for the gas? Yeah, we've been in contact with Ron Fabian, who, who did that originally for the family. He thinks there's one tank left, uh, not 100% sure, but yes, absolutely. That'll have to be mitigated, proper irrigation will have to be done, the building has to be torn down. So there's a number of things that have to happen uh, through the solar, and I believe Act 250, you know this, but I, I wouldn't, um, to make it proper to even build the, the station, you know, the solar array. Thank you. Yeah. 
<clears throat> What's your time frame? Um, if this was functioning in 2022, we'd consider that a success. Other questions? Looking to refer to committee or yep. are we looking to mm -hmm. community development? Refer to community development. Second. Correct. So motion to refer, it's been seconded to economic, uh, community economic development. With all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Okay. Uh, so Alderman Talbot is the chair for community economic development. He'll be reaching out to you to okay. get you in there and we'll discuss what you're looking Can for. Can I slip you a business card? Yep. <laughs> please do. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, Phil. Uh, we are still outside the rail. Are there any members of the community who wish to address? Yes. Hi, I'm Elise Headlam, and I'm here today on behalf of Project Vision's Neighborhood Engagement Committee. Um, on Wednesday, September 22nd, we are going to be having a neighborhood walk um, with the police department, members of Project Vision, and members of my committee. We're going to be walking Baxter Street and Cleveland Avenue, so some of you that live in that area, if you um, happen to see us walking, please come out and greet us. This is a positive step by the police department and project vision to work together to um, build engagement to uh, introduce people to the police department in a relaxed and positive way and an opportunity for us to tell people about um, project vision um, we're going to be starting at the council on aging facility they they're giving us parking so we won't be blocking streets and um, we have about 12 people that are going to be walking. The chief has said he would be with us. And um, John Dickerson and Greg Sheldon, we're hoping, are going to be with us. And we have been doing these walks. This is not the first walk that we've done. We've been doing them regularly. This is our second year doing them. Um, but I want to just point one thing out, that this walk is a little bit unusual because of the staffing shortage in the police department. So we're really, really lucky that we have three members of the police department who have been able to, probably on their own time, um, come and, and join us for this walk. And I would assume this body would know that because of the staffing shortage in the police department that many of our officers are now working um, a lot of overtime and some people are working even as much as 20 hours in a day. So we're hoping that this is going to be an opportunity for us to um, let people in the community know that we're very fortunate to have a police department that we have that is helping to keep us um, safe, maybe one of the safest communities in the United States. So I wanted to yes. give you a heads up. If you live in that area, please tell your neighbors to come out and greet us. We do not knock on doors. We will be handing out some information. We probably are going to have some Frisbees to hand out to the kids and it'll be a fun walk. So if there are any questions, I'll... What's the date of that again? It's the 22nd, it's Wednesday. 22nd. At five o'clock, I, uh -huh. I don't think I said that. Thank you. Any other questions for Liz? Easy, yeah. You do need one? Yeah. Could you ask it? Oh, yeah, so, uh, one quick question. We're curious, did you file for a permit for the walk? Um, no, <coughs> these are just, I don't know. We, we're walking with the police department, so it's something that they have set up. I don't uh, know. It's, um, we break into small groups. Yeah, this is a very small group. It's not an organized <laughs> yeah. event. It's, it's a walk that's been held several of them over the last uh, couple of years, and I don't believe any of them have had a permit. <coughs> We usually walk in pairs. You know, one of oh. us will walk with a police officer, or maybe two of us will walk with a police officer, and we see people on the street, and we just go up and we talk to them. It's, it's been absolutely amazing how many people have moved to Rutland um, because they've been hearing about all the good things that are going on in Rutland, and this gives us an opportunity to meet them. The last um, walk that we did was, um, Oh gosh, Vernon Street and 
trying to think what the other street was, State Street, kind of, in that area, and we found three new family, four new families that had moved into Rutland. And one of the other things that we're doing as a committee is we're handing out uh, welcome bags to people who move into the city and they have gifts like maple syrup or cider and then they also have some information about um, Project Vision. So we're really trying to um, do what we can to promote the city and make it a, a good place for everybody to live. Wonderful. That sounds great. Thank you. Okay. It, oh, Alderman Crusoe. Um, I think that's a, uh, a great event. I think uh, you know, the Project Vision, like, like the Halloween Parade and all these other city-related events are important, but I'm just going to throw out to the board if we should just request, um, refer to Charter and Ordinance, maybe a look at these, because she did say that, you know, if people want to join or walk, whatever, this could get big and bigger and bigger and then fall into permit area. And I just wonder if we had to have the committee look at, at, at these walks and, and just, just to make sure that it doesn't... These don't keep happening, these small ones without permits, regardless, you know, well, the city did it, then we can do it. Well, if I could, for clarification, this sounds more like a community stroll. It is. You're walking exactly. through the neighborhood. Oh, it's a community, community stroll now, all right. Yeah, no, oh, not a, like a it's, formal it's walking. Pretty, it's pretty informal. I mean, yeah. we do pick a date, and we, you know, we choose to meet, and we, we arrange to have officers come with us. But so far, we've had very small groups. I mean, we've had as many as four people walking. And like I said, I'm all in favor of it. I, I think it's wonderful, but period. Next paragraph. I'm wondering if the board should just look at community strolls in the future. That's all. And if there's no I'm second for it, I guess I'm happy to talk with then. anybody about it. Um, I'm sure we could bring Greg Sheldon and he's, you know, he's the uh, executive director of Project Vision right. so far. That hasn't come up. No, it's a good so, idea. It's a, excellent. We wish you well. Thank you. And I didn't hear a second, for I guess, for Mike, so <laughs> there it is. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Elise. Thanks, David. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, we are still outside the rail. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the board on matters not on the agenda? Seeing none, communications from the mayor, Mayor Allaire. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, good evening, everyone. So uh, I just had one issue I wanted to bring up uh, tonight uh, to touch briefly on, and that is the uh, use of ARPA funds. Um, I know there's been a couple of um, uh, inquiries over the last couple of meetings about, uh, you know, when uh, can we get started on talking about the, having the discussion about ARPA funds. And um, I have mentioned that I was hoping to wait until we got some guidance from the uh, federal government. Um, I guess I, um, I'm going to say I eventually think we will get that guidance, but when it comes, I'm really not sure. And when it does come, I don't have a whole lot of faith that it's going to zero in and give us any more um, help and guidance than what we already have. So thinking about it the last couple of weeks, um, we've had several meetings with the department heads, uh, met with the public. Um, we've had some informal discussions here uh, amongst uh, the alderman and myself. Um, I, uh, what I've done is I put together a list. This has uh, been gleaned from those discussions, and I'm going to hand it out to you folks tonight. This is kind of a starting point. Um, I know it's in committee. Um, I think it would be a good idea for you to take a look at this and uh, see how it fits into what uh, your you know ideas and, and vision are for, for that um, first tranche of money. Uh, this is going to be for uh, and, uh, some of this um, some of these dollar figures are more or less guesses on my part. Others are based more in, uh, in estimates from directly from department heads, but we can go through that as, uh, as time goes on. But uh, this will give you a good idea of about two and a half million dollars of what, where I hope that the uh, you know, majority of this money can go. And I think it's gonna help out a lot, a lot of people in, in a lot of different areas. So um, I will hand that out to you, pass it around. And that's really more FYI than anything else. Uh, and uh, when you do begin to have your committee meetings, um, I would love to be invited. Thank you very much. That's all I got. Thank you, Mayor Lair. You're welcome. Any questions for the mayor for to let him off? Seeing none, we're on to additions and deletions to the agenda, of uh, which we have nothing. Which brings us to reports and letters from department heads and officials. So first, <coughs> Superintendent Peters, the 2021 Halloween Parade special event permit request, pages one through five of your packet. Oh, sorry. 
I was, I was reading the list. <laughs> you'd like to speak to it please so, do I'll it. be here for any questions I'll just uh, what I'll say is we had put um, submissions out there from our community um, we are about 40 floats in so we're starting to see progress um, we do have about one or two um, organizations that have declined this year still due to COVID um, what we what we will see with COVID in the next month i can't tell you um, but we will take the precautions that this board and the mayor cdc gives us as far as outdoor events um, but we do plan on proceeding on as normal um, we will most likely have to hire more um, like the stockton security sensor security to help due to a shortage you know with our police staff um, in the next two weeks we'll have a department head meeting along with um, regional <coughs> ambulance and everyone that's involved in the parade. Yeah. Yeah. Dana motion to suspend the rules. Second. So moved. Uh, Can we get one? Move. Yeah, we got okay. it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we have a motion and it's been seconded to suspend the rules. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. And I'll entertain a motion to approve this special event. So moved. Second. 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 All right, we have a motion that has been seconded to approve the Halloween Parade October 30th, 2021 from 3 p.m. till 10 p.m. Um, would all those in favor please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Up next, we have the Halloween 5K Running Scared, pages 6 through 10 of your packet. So this is just another tradition that we've had. Um, we don't... We don't actually close down streets, but we do have safety patrol on the on the corners. We do ask DPW to help with a couple road. Um, they're not really closures because we don't close the roads. The runners stay on the sidewalks. Um, we usually tend to get about 100 to 200 runners on that day, and the map is there for you. I move to suspend the rules. Second. second. We have a motion to suspend the rules. It's been seconded. Would all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion carries. And I'll move for the approval of Halloween 5K Running Scared to be held October 30th for setup at 9 a.m. and breakdown at 1 p.m. Second. second. We have a motion. It's been seconded. Alderman Gillum. Yeah, I didn't ask the first time around. Do you have enough volunteers or we need more volunteers? Um, we should know that in the next two weeks, for sure. You know. Two years ago, we really increased our safety protocol using DPW trucks to, um, for, the, for the parade, but I will definitely reach out um, after we know. And if anyone would like to attend that meeting, you could just email me separately, and you'll, I'll make sure that you're um, on that list. Any further questions for Superintendent Peters? Hearing and seeing none, we have a motion. It's been seconded. Would all those in favor please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Thank you very much. Up next, Treasurer Markowski. Uh, first up, recommendation for write off of fully depreciated assets. And this was emailed to all of us. Okay, so um, I sent a memo on this. Uh, so we're looking at $2 million. Uh, in assets that are on the books that are really um, un we're unable to identify, they're greater than 20 years old for various reasons when we're looking at the list. What it boils down to is our asset position total is over overstated. So we're looking to write those off and when we write those off, we're not looking at an expense. We're just looking at an entry that's gonna reduce the capital assets and reduce the accumulated depreciation. And when you, when you look over the list, you see most of it is uh, water and sewer fund related. So we did ask the um, DPW commissioner to review the list, see if he was comfortable with that, because that's most of that. So um, I didn't know if anyone had any questions. It's complicated, but if there are questions, concerns with that before, I'd like to do that for June 30, 2000, fiscal year 21, so that we could, um, just for accuracy of our reporting. Good. Any questions of Treasurer Markowski? So, if I, if I may, Mary, so like, I hate to put you on the spot. No, just go ahead. If I can't, I can't. <laughs> right. So, like, say for uh, Department of Water, 
So, I mean, I just see years here. So, do we have any idea what makes up that year? Um, that it was a truck or it was uh, something? It could be. It was really when we um, started adding the, using the software and entering things into the fixed asset module. Okay. That's how they were labeled initially, just to get the project started. So, okay. that was a big undertaking to do that. So, so they've the, been in there. These um, are these might be projects that have been completed, but they're still on the books as a some kind of a correct. Amount. And we have taken full depreciation. We really like when you see we can identify that asset, okay. 1976. So it's really cleaning up our records to. Okay. Alderman Nunges. So everything that you're proposing here is just the, you validated with the auditors this order, or you have knowledge. Yes, and I right reached out to um, Sullivan Powers what our plan was and and how best to go about doing that. Great, thank you. Thanks. Any other questions, Treasurer Markowski? So I'll move to suspend the rules. Second. I move to suspend the rules. Suspend seconded. Would all those in favor please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. And I'll move for the approval to write off fully the depreciated assets of 2167086 as of June 30th, 2021. Second. We have a motion. It's been seconded. Is there any further discussion or debate on this issue? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank and you. Treasurer Markowski, your treasurer's report for August 31st, 2021, and this was also emailed. Okay, um, when I'm looking at the August reports, I'm still doing um, year-end entries that are going to impact possibly balance sheet, income and expenses, so I don't get into a lot of detail there on in the August revenues and expenses, but need to report them anyway. If you see anything in there, you have questions, please. Let me know. I've tried to add to the report package more summary information on a monthly basis. So you're monitoring the department's uh, revenue and expense lines a little bit more closely monthly in a summary so you're not going through all 80 pages. And also added another uh, a fund balance report that we'll watch every month as well where you can see what activity is going on. We're always looking at general fund, proprietary funds. So this will give you a way to be monitoring all of the other funds that the city holds, the capital funds. And I added and highlighted the ARPA funds. So you'll see how that, you know, you, you should be watching that because you should know, if you see money going out of there, you should know what it was for, you know. So that's something to watch every um, month. Uh, End of August, we had the first installment around 780,000. You see that in that fund. Um, I did want to talk a little bit uh, delinquency report. You know, delinquencies are always a challenge. I feel like at the end of the year, you feel like you're doing great, and then FY21 dumps in. So you got a whole other challenge there. But um, of note, um, we've entered into many more payment agreements with taxpayers. Just reaching out, we don't want to get to a tax sale. So we've been pretty successful there. Um, also <clears throat> helped uh, on the water and sewer side with the uh, state emergency relief assistance program to, to get the rate payers there if they're having trouble. And I had read something about maybe some programs for homeowners, so we'll keep an eye on that too. Um, we actually had four, five tax sales come to redemption. Uh, at the, during the month of August, and four of those are now city owned. So that is a lot of work on building and zoning. RA is involved in the city owned property process. But I did want to just mention as I, I look back at those, and I want you to know that we just don't tax sale property. Some of these, when I looked at last payment in 2012, 2016. So these are just, we're not seeing any progress on these. We need to move on them. So I um, wanted to point that out. Um, I'm going to move right on to parking fund. That's, oh, did you have a question? Oh, I, I did. Yeah. Is, is the reason that we don't do that because of manpower short? Like, what's the reason that we wait so long to get to that point? Everyone presents a different case. You lose contact with the taxpayer. We try to make every effort, and we're also looking at number of years in balance. 
you know, you don't want to be tax sailing 2,000, you know, and, and going through that process. We wait and we don't want them to get as high as they've been, but um, I just kind of look back and say, we don't want, the city doesn't want to be in the business of owning property, mm -hmm. right? But, but these are our last resort on these, and we hope a couple of these, we thought that they would pay off before. We were very hopeful and thought that a couple of those would pay off before they reach the redemption. So. Yeah. Alderman Gillum. So those four properties are beyond the redemption? Yes, yeah, so now they are owned by the city, insured by the city, okay. and being managed by um, building and zoning right now. So we can sell them. Yes, we so okay. we'll see those Good. go through the Good. process. So we're not waiting anymore. Yep, move them along. Um, I think the most important thing in the report, and we knew this was coming, is looking at that parking fund, going into a negative cash balance. So um, I think I spoke with um, Alderwoman Davis as chair of finance, that that's something that we really need to, we need to look at, we need to make a plan for it. If you look at the parking fund, we have a budgeted loss this year of $30,000. So this position is not gonna get better. So we need to so, look for May I ask a question, and it's just sure. memory, Mary, and you may not you might remember also, but did the, did the fund, and maybe David, he sat here a long time too, did the parking meter fund ever really successfully fund the position, the personnel position? Yes, it did, and it would have a surplus as well, so. I Up to did. what point, we think? Five years ago? Yeah, maybe longer. Maybe longer. And, and not only is it funding the position, but it's right. funding all the benefits. All the benefits for previous uh, people. Correct. Right. So we have business. a retiree, two or one I retiree? Think, two, two or two. three maybe yeah, now. Yeah. So we need to look at well, budgeting. Funds. Yeah, we should right. be looking at budgeting that fund um, and what we can do there for that fund. And I know when we started the transit fund, we actually were, there were resources in parking fund that we took out to support the right. transit fund as right. well. So yeah. um, at one time it was doing very well. But. So, so uh, if I may, I'd like to move to refer the parking um, fund to finance committee. Second. Right. We have a motion that's been seconded. Um, question on that? It can wait for committee. That's fine. Okay. Um, would all those in favor please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. And Alderman Franco, did you have a question, though, for Special Murkowski? Oh, I mean, it was just regarding the parking meters. I mean, I was just trying to understand if um, there was a difference between the revenue we see from, like, the kiosk parking meters in, like, on Center Street versus our, like, quarter rent parking meters, because I see in, in the recommendations for ARPA funding potentially an upgrade, and so I was just trying to connect the dots on uh, Yeah, we should have that conversation and, and invite... Um, Parking enforcement and then DPW, we have someone who works on the parking meters in the, and, and get a feel for are these kiosks successful? What are they seeing out there? And then look at it. And I can um, go back and separate the revenue that comes from meters mm -hmm. and, and what comes from the kiosk too, and we can look at that. Yeah, I think that would be very helpful, especially as we're determining where to put our money. So Right, and I, I look at that, to be honest, as I, I've been working on, can we recover some of the revenue losses that we experienced during COVID and maybe that would support if we were gonna do additional kiosks or something. Mm -hmm. So that isn't off the table, but um, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Thank I just you. think we need to, if we support a fund, we need to make sure that fund's gonna then self-sustain. And that's the concern I have right. of the fund for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I think that um, I've given you all the information, highlights, any other questions on what you saw in the packet? Thank you very much, Mr. Markowski. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> all right, this brings us to reports of standing committees. Alderman Talbot, Community and Economic Development, and this was emailed out teaching us. All right, the Community and Economic Development Committee met on September 14th, 2021. <coughs> Members present included myself, Sharon Davis, Mike Dungis, Bill Gillum, 
and Devin Neary. Others present were Matt Whitcomb, Thomas Franco, Brennan Duffy, Chris Satori, and Stephen Box. The meeting convened at 5.32 p.m. The purpose of the meeting was to hear Brennan Duffy's report on potential use of ARPA funds for a rental housing rehab assistance program. Brennan spoke with Josh Hanford, Commissioner at Vermont Department of Housing and Community Development, Katie Buckley, Director of the ARPA Assistance and Coordination Program for the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, and Jenny Heislop of the Vermont Housing and Conservation Boards. Based on these conversations, Brennan concluded that ARPA funds can only be used for affordable housing for households below 80% of area median income. Brennan also shared that Vermont has numerous HUD designated qualified census tracts in which 50% or more of the population is at 60% or less of AMI. ARPA rules allow for a broader range of services and programs within a QCT. Brennan explained that while Rutland City does have Opportunity Zone and New Market Tax Credit census tracts, we do not have a tract that meets this HUD definition right now. Alderman Dunn just asked if that's something we have to apply for. Brennan answered no, that this is built from existing census data that HUD has compiled. Brennan shared that our congressional delegation has questioned this and petitioned the Treasury Department to potentially expand qualifying census tracts in Vermont. Alderman Franco pointed out that Rutland does in fact have a QCT listed on the HUD website. Brennan also explained that it might be possible for the city to claim a loss of revenue due to the pandemic if the city had an annual growth rate below 4.5%. In this scenario, the city could use ARPA funds to replenish the general fund and then use the general fund to support a rental housing program. Alderman Dunn just pointed out that supporting small business is a piece of ARPA, specifically loan, grant, and assistance programs to help small businesses rebound from the pandemic. He wondered if some landlords might qualify for this type of assistance. Brennan felt that property owners, even those registered as an LLC, would not fit the definition of a small business as they lack the employment component. Alderman Neary felt that Rutland might need to take initiative and fund its own pilot program. I propose budgeting $100,000 per year for a revolving loan fund and targeting specific blighted areas, giving four loans per year with the loan fund growing over time. Alderman Dunn just advocated for simultaneously exploring alternate funding sources to add to that program. Alderwoman Davis wondered about the city tax sale properties and if the rehab assistance program might support turning those properties into market rate rental housing. Alderman Talbot proposed using money from tax sales to help fund the rehab assistance program. There was a brief discussion of potentially reallocating some of the buy-up funds to support this program. Alderman Franco indicated that there's some new state funding for accessory dwelling units that might be beneficial. It was concluded that I would work with Brennan Duffy and Andrew Stranista to draft guidelines for a pilot program to assist with the rehabilitation of owner-occupied rental properties. The meeting adjourned at 6.30 p.m. Uh, then on Monday, September 20th, Brennan Duffy updated me that the initial exclusion of Rutland City from the list of HUD QCTs by the Vermont's League of Cities and Towns was an error. Census Tract 9631 does qualify as a QCT. The area encompasses parts of downtown and parts of the previously targeted Northwest neighborhood. The ability to utilize ARPA funding for rental housing initiatives in the QCT may be less restrictive, and Brennan has sought additional guidance from VLCT on eligible uses. Thank you. <clears throat> Any questions of Alderman Talbot and Alderman Franco? Uh, not a question so much as just a, a comment. I mean, I just really want to underscore uh, the importance of recognizing that we have a qualified census tract here in Rutland um, for our members who are considering what we should use ARPA funds on. It actually does extend it, the eligibility, quite a bit. Um, you know, for reference, it allows us to facilitate access to health and social services. That includes um, assistance to accessing or applying to public benefits. It includes community violence intervention programs. And importantly to this discussion, the development of affordable housing and to increase the supply of affordable and high quality living units, um, as well as new or expand, expanded childcare. So I just say all of this just for us to recognize that there are now some additional uses that we may not have considered because the Vermont League of Cities and Towns had indicated we did not have a qualified census tract. When I spoke with them about this, um, they did investigate and as uh, Alderman Talbot indicated, they changed it, but they also recognized that they had also excluded uh, Bennington. So I just wanna point this out for any of you know, our residents who are also thinking about potential uses and they want to advocate um, that that is the case. Uh, there are some guidelines on, on using it within those areas, but um, uh, you know, it, the severity of excluding a city like Seems Rutland nice. that has faced poverty uh, from that list uh, at such high levels is, is pretty ridiculous. Um, and I would just call on, you know, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns to look more closely at our, you know, central and, so and southern cities that have, uh, 
you know, experience these conditions when they're looking at such critical lists to be putting forth as guidance, uh, especially when it's coordinated by our governor to say, here's this uh, additional guidance that we can help you out with, and then we almost miss out on using it for, for things we're actually eligible for. So um, that's all I wanted to point out, uh, and just wanted to ask the board to consider those additional uses moving forward. Thank you, Alder Franco. Any other questions, comments? If not, thank you very much, Alderman Talbot. This brings us to reports of select committees, of which we have none. Reports of representatives, we have none. Petitions, letters, miscellaneous communication, there's nothing. Board of Control Commissioners, we have nothing. So we are now to unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business to come before the board? I just Alderman have Cooper. a question on whether this is unfinished business or not. But the list of the ARPA project that, uh, that uh, the, the mayor gave it, he's gone. Which, uh, maybe, Mary, do you know if there's a time frame on this? I mean, what I was looking at, what I was wondering, is what the board, the pleasure of the board, is should we take these each in individual items that the departments have requested and put them in the proper committee to discuss them further? I just wanted to throw that out there and see if the, you know, what the board wished. Uh, and I didn't know if there was a time frame on this to be. I can't answer that, but I would, what I see is, and the city has an obligation to spend the money. There's so much guidance out there that maybe you would form a committee, like an ad hoc committee, community members, board members, and then do the decision making. You know, you have some list, but, but what does the community want? There's a uh, VLCT has um, Monday a whole day webinar, ARPA day, uh, October 4th. So there's still a lot of uh, rules and guidance rolling out on this that will help us along. But, um, but these all qualify, right? No, I don't, don't believe so. Okay. I don't okay. believe so. When I looked at the list, I think there are probably more than half that maybe don't meet the criteria when I look at it. But I, I don't know. I don't have so that's, if I may, that's what I was going to suggest that first we have an opportunity to go through the list and have that discussion and um, are we in agreement or do we have something else we want to add? Then if we choose to break it down to recreation or DPW to, to dig deeper into, um, you know, what has been requested, we could do that. But let's, maybe let's do the clearinghouse a little bit at finance and then go from there okay yeah it's fine with me if they just like i said i'm just throwing it out there for the board's pleasure so if i may mr chairman okay. does the does the board feel comfortable that uh, the guidance that we have is enough to just move forward and meet don't feel like we have to wait for any any additional okay very good thank you all right Oh, the Magruso. This air conditioner to me sounds like a Learjet. I can hardly hear. You're talking about this list that we got tonight from the mayor? Correct. Okay, yes. and moving where with it? It's, well, it's, it's in finance committee. Right. Alderman Clifford brought up, should we break it out? Like there's a request from DPW, one for rec. Should we put them in separate committees? And I suggested maybe we have the discussion in finance to see if we even support uh, you know, infrastructure for the chambers, say, you know, and if we don't, then we're going to possibly take it off the list or add something to the list. And then if we want to dig deeper or develop a committee, we can do it from there. I, I support yeah. I support that then. That's a, I was going to, yeah. I didn't know what you were saying, but after you were done, I was going to say, we need to go through this list. It reminds me of the movie Overboard when he finds out he's rich and says, wants to know how to spell Porsche. You know? <laughs> I mean, some of the stuff here, and, and I said I was sick and wasn't able to attend the meeting, but through the, the Harold mouthpiece, I was, it, it was a little bit of accuracy there, but we need to bring people in. We need to work on something that's going to pe make more people come back. We've lost a lot of people. And, you know, when we were on this board 20 years ago, there were 25,000, 27,000 people, and now we're down in the teens. And we got to, this has got to focus on bringing people to Rutland and where there's people, there's money, and where there's, uh, 
driving business and, and all that. So I, I'm glad that's staying in committee, and I hope I'm feeling well and can go to it and, and, and help with it because uh, uh, you can bring all the snow plows in and tennis courts and all that stuff. It's beautiful stuff, but we got to get people in here and we got to get good housing in here for those people and to help get this community back on its feet. So that I appreciate it, and I'm glad you were able to uh, re repeat that for me. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Thank you Alderman Davis. <clears throat> All right, we're still under unfinished business. Is there any further unfinished business to come before the board? Hearing and seeing none, this takes us to miscellaneous motions, resolutions, and new business. We have up Alderman DePoy, committee referral, proposed ban on mask mandates in the city of Rutland. Alderman DePoy. Thank you, Mr. President. So, Mr. President, what I'm asking for is a referral, um, probably to charter an ordinance or, or um, even general, but uh, I think we need to start talking about in the state of Vermont whether we need mask mandates anymore. We have an 85% um, vaccination rate in the state. Um, you know, the kids in the schools right now, I'm being told, are um, being uh, compromised at, to some extent because of the carbon dioxide that they're taking in. Uh, they're, they're breathing out into the mask. The carbon dioxide stays behind the mask. They're breathing that back in. It can lead to uh, potentially brain damage, but in, in the very least, it can um, lead to uh, the kids not functioning correctly cognitively at school. Um, I just, uh, you know, I think there are questions that we need to ask. I think we need to have some people in, maybe medical professionals at least, to come in and help us out here as to whether a mask mandate is something that we need. Um, I think in, in uh, everyday life, it's, it's our choice as to whether we need to have masks on our face. And I fully support somebody's right to wear a mask. Um, I also fully support somebody's right to not wear a mask. Um, I think that uh, we are a year and a half, almost two years into this, and um, I'd like to make the motion to send this to, um, I, I guess, to uh, about a committee of the uh, charter and ordinance. How about and, a committee of the hall on that? Um, I, I guess committee of the whole. I, I, I like the alderman's uh, suggestion. Second. There. We can all talk about it. We can all figure out what this city should do. And uh, obviously what we uh, decide here at the board level is what, um, you know, what we do as, as a city. And, uh, you know, I'm fine with the committee of the whole. We can all talk about it and discuss it and um, see if we can come up with some answers beyond somebody saying thou shalt do this. Um, I have a problem with people telling me what to do and um, also I know that there are other um, there are other avenues beyond a mask mandate such as uh, vaccination cards and that sort of thing. Um, not going to support anything like that. Uh, nor will I ever show anyone anything to do with any of my health care that I have taken part in, nor will I ask you, Mr. President, about your health care. So um, that said, I'm asking for a referral to uh, Committee of the Whole. Second again. Second. We have a motion and it's been seconded to refer to Committee of the Whole uh, proposed ban on mask mandates in the city of Rutland. Alderman Garuso. I was just going to say I really support the motion. I'm glad we're putting it in committee of the whole. I spent a couple of days in Dartmouth again last week. Um, everybody's wearing them because there's all kinds of different people with God knows what, what, what's going on. Um, but going in stores, I mean, I, I'm actually proud of, I mean, the city attorney's wearing one. There were some people here there's tonight. Good for them. That's their wish, but it's not mine. And I've been vaccinated and checked out and, and I've the, got the, the cotton swabs in the nose a couple times this past week and I'm, I'm fine, but I think, I think Alderman DuPoy is right. We don't need somebody to be telling us if they want to, let them. If they don't want to, then don't make them. So I, I support the motion and I think it's one we ought to jump on too. Thank you, Alderman Russo. <clears throat> Alderman Franco. Yeah, I would just like a clarification. Is the proposed ban on mask mandates made by the city of Rutland or you're proposing a ban on mask mandates made by like the state of Vermont? 
because I'm not sure that we could simply not do what the state is enforcing. So I'm trying to get clarification on what we're trying to propose here. And Mr. President, I mean, that's, that's why I'm asking for a referral, because I don't know the answer to that question, and I'm not even trying to throw that out on the floor at this point. Um, I, what I'm simply doing is, is saying I'd like to have a discussion about it, get some answers to those questions, um, because I have the same questions. Can we in the city of Rutland ban mask mandates? Uh, if the answer to that is no, then I want to know why. I want some information as to why we cannot do that at the local level. In this state, we seem to talk an awful lot about local control, especially over education and other things. So um, that's, that's a, a very good question that I'd love to know the answer to. And by the way, Mr. President, while I am speaking, um, this, m my proposal when we go to um, committee on this would not be um, uh, on the uh, medical profession. So in medical facilities, if uh, it would not apply, my idea is that it would not apply to medical facilities. Medical facilities wear masks quite a bit. Surgeons always wear masks in the surgery room, um, in the operating room. So um, it would not, in my thoughts on this, would not apply to any of the medical facilities in the city. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman may Clifford. I may ask a question. Do you have a lot of constituents that feel the same way? And like, have you talked? You must. You must have talked. To so, Mr. President, um, I have spoken to quite a few people. Um, I've heard people talking about it, especially at some of the uh, sporting events that I've been to this fall. Uh, actually, it's still summer, but uh, this year since school has started, um, and there are people that are rather irritated about any mandates uh, dealing with masks. Any further questions? Come. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it just seems to me to have a committee meeting on something you could Google doesn't really make sense. I mean, trying to understand if a state has authority over a city is a simple question and I would hope that anyone serving in government would understand um, how that works. So I, I'm going to vote no because I think that we have to spend our time, very limited time wisely on what we work on in this, com in this, in th these chambers as a committee or as aldermen and um, I don't think that this warrants a further discussion. I understand if others feel differently but personally that's how I'll be voting. Thank you, Alderman Franco. Alderman Garusa? I said it before. It's just a motion to refer to committee, but I, I believe, if, and I'm subliminally heard out of Alderman Deploy or whatever, I don't think we're worried so much about the state as if, if the city wanted to do it on their own. Am I, am, am I also reading that in, in between what you're saying? Because the, the, the city trying to implement a mass mandate, too? Is that what we're looking at? Is, is that where we're headed with this, too? I mean, if the state does it, he's right. I think you have to do what the state says. But we're also looking at this in committee as can somebody like the mayor or the board of aldermen say, we're going to have a mass mandate and we have to do it. Is, is that what you're contemplating? Or? Oh, what if you wish to answer? So, Mr. President, um, I think that uh, this board should have every right to have input if there is going to be a mass mandate. I don't think that that should be a unilateral decision made by anyone in this city um, to mandate upon the city employees or anyone here in the city that they must wear a mask. Uh, that would give this board back the power to, to at least have a say as to whether we're going to have a mask mandate in the city. So um, you know, this is an opportunity for this board to weigh in on that. and. Quite frankly, if this board says, hey, we're going to institute a mask mandate to Alderman Franco's question, then this board has that authority. If that's what comes out of committee, um, then so be it. I'll support that. But my um, proposal here is to put it into committee so that we can have an honest discussion about the pros and cons of a mask mandate of any kind here in the city of Rutland. And as I said, and when this goes to committee, I wouldn't support a mask, a ban on the mask mandates in the medical profession. Thank you, Alderman Dungeons. Awesome. Um, Mr. President, I'm also curious is if Alderman DePoy is referring to 
businesses uh, that operate within the city of Rutland and wants to include that in the discussion on telling that business whether or not they can mandate masks in their in their place of business. Alderman DeFoy, if you wish to answer. And, and that's a good question for the committee process. If it, you know this board and its infinite wisdom decides to send it to committee, um, we can talk about that. Um, you know, as far as businesses, independent businesses go, um, some operate outside the city but are based in the city. Uh, you have builders, you have contractors that work all over the county, all over the state. Um, you know, my, I myself do a lot of work in the city and outside of the city. So, um, you know, that's a, that's a good question that we can uh, delve into when we talk about this in a uh, committee setting. Uh, Alderman Dungess and I were thinking along the same lines. That was pretty much my question, exactly. Uh, did you have your hand again, Alderman Clifford? Uh, I'll um, yield my time. <laughs> Alderman Talbot. So I'm just struck by a parallel to earlier this year when there was uh, someone brought up a land acknowledgement and possibly reading a land acknowledgement at meetings and wanted to send that to committee. And there was a little, some opposition, and one of the reasons given for opposition is the, the sort of liability it might create for the city if we acknowledge that indigenous people had this land before we did. Um, there are five states with mask mandates, and they're currently under federal, federal investigation for violating the Americans with Disabilities Act. So I'd be very concerned about potential liability that exploring a ban on mask mandates could create for the city. So I'll be voting no. Thank you, Alderman Talbot. Alderman Neary? <clears throat> um, yeah. I believe last meeting the mayor was asked this question about policies within City Hall and he was going to get back to us because I think it would be inappropriate to have a committee meeting without the mayor or before he indicates what the plan is for City Hall because if they're planning actively in department head meetings to institute this policy and then at the same time we're talking about banning it, that could be a pretty big conflict. So. Either the mayor needs to be a part of this conversation or we need to wait until we get guidance from the mayor as to what's happening here at City Hall. Franco? Yeah, if, if I may, I mean, I think the premise of the motion earlier clarified by Alderman DePoy was that he wanted to get answers as to if we could enact uh, a mask mandate, but he just said that if the committee voted to enact one that he would accept that, which implies that we do have that authority. So I think we have our answer, at least by his standard. It doesn't make sense to bring that to committee if we already have an answer to both questions of state authority and city authority. So I, again, <laughs> I'll just end there. Thank you, Alderman well, About the only thing I'd say was in the years of being around this, uh, someone brings an idea to us, we either suspend the rules or send it to committee and then we have to wait around for it to come back to the board to become law or, or to be implemented. So what I see is doing is harmlessly opening up a committee uh, line in the chalkboard for if the issue comes up, no time, we don't have to have a meeting, we don't have to have any referrals, it's all done. If nothing happens, it dies in committee. I don't know, that's what I see, because I don't see any harm in it. I don't see this being a law, I don't see this being a rule. It's just a motion to refer to committee, and if so be it from there. Thank you, Alderman Russo. Alderman Clifford. Yeah, just, go ahead. I, I totally understand um, Alderman DePoy's, you know, motion and what his intentions are. He has talked to constituents, which he has to answer to. Um, if we were to say, you know, no to this, and that sends a clear message. We don't want to deal with it at all. Um, but on the flip side of that is that, again, what the alderman brought up about you know, telling a business how to run their business, I don't agree with that at all. Um, I think they have the right to do uh, what they want to do. If you don't want to go into that business because of uh, what they uh, recommend or what their rules are, then you don't have to go there. But I think that's the, the premise of what the alderman has as, as far as being, have, having a right to do, to, to do what he wants. So. Alderman DePoy. And so, you know, that just leads me 
to what I hope is the end here because I, I'm just simply asking for a referral to committee where we can debate all of this. Um, I'm not asking to debate that to debate to debate this tonight, and I think you know we are way off track um, anyways because we should be debating the merits of sending it to the committee of the whole instead of the merits of a mask mandate or a mask mandate ban right now anyways I'm simply asking for a referral to the committee of the whole um, so that we can discuss everything that you're all the questions that are coming up and everything obviously there are a lot of questions so by sending it to committee we can vet this whole thing so that's my request is to send it to committee thank you Alderman Foy. Alderman Neri. just one clarification then if that is true then it seems like the agenda is missed mark because it says propose proposed ban on mass so is it is that the referral is it we are proposing a ban on mass let's send it to committee to talk about it or is it let's just talk broadly about policies regarding masks because there's a huge difference there sure. so I, I have the referral it's been seconded as a proposed ban on mask mandates in the city of Rutland would that be correct that is correct uh, mr. president um, however as I stated with Alderman Franco if the decision out of the committee of the whole which is us anyway is to actually institute a ban on masks I, as I said I would fully support that the decision of this board to do so thank you Alderman Foy. it does not in my opinion and with you as the chair of the committee of the whole, it does not have to be limited to the ban. It can go the opposite direction. Thank you. Any further discussion, questions, debate? If not, we have a motion. It's been seconded to refer to the committee of the whole proposed ban on mass mandates in the city of Rutland. Would all those in favor please say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. 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 Motion fails. All right, we are still under miscellaneous motions, resolutions, and new business. Is there anything else to come before this board? I'm going to adjourn. Wait, Second. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, I need <laughs> to put get your my hand down. <laughs> who, said, who said yes to the committee referral? You, you, and you. Just three of you? Okay. Thank you. That's all I needed to know. I'll never interrupt your meeting again. <laughs> <laughs> Second. Right. We have a motion to adjourn. It's been seconded. Okay. Would all those in favor please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. We stand adjourned. Thank you, everyone.